is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you in the name of God the Father who has created us, God the Son who has redeemed us, and God the Holy Spirit who sanctifies and keeps us in the true faith. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This time before our readings, I invite Cindy Pearson, and she is going to do what her father used to do every year for us and read something special concerning Labor Day. As all of you know, my father for years read um, a poem um, about the flag or about our country. Um, he had a great love for his country, and he felt sometimes like uh, people didn't respect the flag. So this is uh, just something in honor of my father. I am the American flag. I have earned the right to be heard. I will speak for the wisdom of life. Look at my face. I have known over 40 presidents. I have traveled far. I have long, lived long and seen much. I have paid the price for my freedom of speech. I have wrapped my arms around those who have died for me. I am proud of my country and preserve my dignity. You have a freedom to choose. Oh, glory, they call me. I am the American flag. Under God, with liberty and justice for all. Also, just a little speech for um, Labor Day. It is a task, if a task is once begun, never leave it till it's done. Be the labor great or small, do it well or not at all. May all of you be blessed with a happy holiday. Let us now listen to the reading of God's Word. <laughs> the first reading this morning is from Jeremiah. Oh Lord, you know, Remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became a joy, became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, the Lord God of hosts. I do not sit in the company of Mary nor did I rejoice under the weight of your hand. I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you, for I am with you. To save and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked, and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. 
Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From the time on after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of the Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, praise you, Christ. Christ. Let us now sing, We Praise You, O God, page 4 in your book. resurrection and life to all who trust in him. He lives and rules among us now and for all eternity. We believe the Spirit of God is alive among us, daily giving us new birth, filling us with grace and truth, and bringing us into one life with each other in harmony with the whole creation 
we praise God for a lot. Um, today we're going to sing an old tune, Oh God, Our Help in Ages Past, but we're going to put some new words to it by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette, because in honor of Pet Blessing Day, we want to thank all our pets for the comfort they give us.
This is a tragedy that you will not see written in the newspapers. You will not hear it on the news because they could care less. In fact, they might even be glad we're having this tragedy. And what that tragedy is, is that too often today, people of the world cannot distinguish Christians from non-Christians. We see Christians doing the same behavior as those who are not followers of Jesus, and that is not how it used to be. Today we see Christian youth caught up in the same questionable and often illegal behaviors as non-Christian youth. We see televangelists scandalize the church by their fraud, their greed, and their sexual exploits. Character is a scarce item today even within the community of the faith. So in our second reading for today, the 12th chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Romans, he is giving us the marks of a true Christian, or the identification, how you can identify, or should be able to identify, a true follower of Jesus Christ. And so we are going to look at those this morning and see how we can incorporate those in our own lives so that when people see us, they will know that we are a Christian. Because after all, in the upper room, the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, which he said that we are to love one another, brothers and sisters in Christ, are to love one another as he loves us. And then he went on to say, and the 13th chapter of the Gospel of John, verse 35, By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So it all begins with love. Love is the foundation of the Christian faith. Love is the number one principle of the Christian lifestyle. Love for God love for Jesus, love for the church, love for each other, and love for the world. And so in verse 9, St. Paul begins by saying, let love, meaning your love, let the love of those who are followers of Jesus Christ, let love be genuine. Here the word love means compassion or what you find joy in. So he's saying, let your compassion now let what you find joy in be genuine. And genuine, the word genuine means not an act. You're not playing a part. You're not pretending. Or you're not impersonating something or someone. Now some people make a lot of money being impersonators. Down through the years there have been a number of famous comedians who became famous because of their ability to impersonate famous people or other entertainers. Those of you who are my age and older may recall when President Kennedy was president. There was a young fellow that became very famous for imitating Kennedy and his entire family. And remember, he was a cabinet member. He made records that made him a, a nice income by doing the parodies of of Kennedy and his family and life in the White House and so forth. So, St. Paul is saying your compassion, what you find joy in, is not to be play acting, it's not to be a part, it's not like you're an actor on the stage and once you're off that stage you no longer have compassion or love, but instead you are, this is to be genuine. It is to be so genuine that the outside world, the secular world, the non-Christian world, will recognize your Christian faith, your love of Jesus, by that compassion, by that which you find joy in, in your daily life. The reason he emphasizes that it be genuine is because people have used the church 
for personal gain. People have played a part. People have acted like they were a, a follower of Jesus, but then you find out later how they simply used the church for some type of personal gain or political gain or economic gain or whatever. Uh, it's like some of these Hollywood stars that will throw these <coughs> big galas in support of age research or ending child trafficking or some other great cause and then afterwards you find out they didn't donate anything to it, they just put on the gate. You know, as Christians, our love is to be genuine. It is to be so genuine that others can see Christ in what we're doing. In the early church, this was such a practice that even the enemies of the church had to recognize, as Jesus said, recognize Christians by their love for one another and their love of others. As many of you know, in the 4th century AD, Constantine the Great, the Emperor of Rome, made Christianity basically the faith of the empire. He took away all the restrictions uh, against it. Uh, he became a baptized Christian himself. Uh, Christianity then began to take over the empire. Well, some years after Constantine the Great died, another Caesar came into power, later in the 4th century. And this Caesar was known as Julian the Apostate because he had acted like he was a Christian until he became Caesar. And once he became Caesar, he tried to overthrow the church and bring back the old pagan gods and goddesses. But he was not having much luck. And one of the reasons was, or the main reason was, because of the love Christians showed not only towards each other, but towards those in society who many people overlook. And so just Julian the Apostate, I'm sorry, it was Julian, not just Julian the Apostate, made this comment about Christians. He said, quote, These Christians give themselves to this kind of humanity. Now we see what it is that makes them such powerful enemies of our gods. It is the brotherly and sisterly love that they manifest <coughs> towards the stranger and suffering and the poor. End of quote. <coughs> what makes them so powerful is that love manifested toward the stranger, the suffering, and the poor. That has been part of God's <coughs> command ever since Adam and Eve got thrown out of the garden ever since he chose Abraham to be the father of a great nation. That <coughs> emphasis on taking care of the stranger, the suffering, and the poor. The sick, the needy, and suffering. And so the Christian church has been known for that. Has been known for taking care of these people. And we've done that through, through love, and so we must let our love be genuine. Then he says, abhor what is evil, that is, the word abhor means to have a horror of something. It means to withdraw from hatred, to loathe hatred. Um, evil is active opposition to good. So he's saying, stay away from, loathe, uh, do not be part of anything that is in opposition to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Anything that is in opposition is evil. Anything that tries to stop the sharing of the gospel of Jesus Christ is <coughs> evil. And so we as Christians demonstrate our obedience to Jesus Christ, our loyalty to Jesus Christ, by staying away from those things that harm the gospel. Hold fast to what is good. The word hold fast means to glue something together, to cement it, to hold it fast, to join it together. And so we hold fast to what is good, which of course is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Loyalty to Jesus Christ. Being that little Christ sent to our neighbor. Loving one another so that the world will know we are Christians by our love. 
And so, by doing this, we overcome that tragedy of today of the world not knowing we are Christians because we're too busy acting like everybody else. We do this, but this separates us from them. Then in verse 10, love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Love one another with brotherly affection means basically love one another like family members love one another. That you have this common bind that a tie that binds you together. And that common tie is that faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And so by loving each other then, we outdo one another in showing honor. That means we lead the way in showing deference our respect to one another. In other words, we don't wait for somebody else to lead the way in showing deference and respect to one another. We take it ourselves in case somebody else isn't leading it, so they'll know. In other words, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we're to allow the Holy Spirit to guide what happens in the church instead of going by the ways of the world, or who's the most popular, or who puts out the best campaign, or who most makes the best friends. The church doesn't operate like that. The church, we, are, we give deference to one another. We do not try to blow our own horn and say that we are so good that we are entitled to this or that, but instead we lead the way in showing deference or respect to one another. There was a spelling bee taking place in a school and it had come down to two girls, Betty and Susan. Betty was a poor girl whose mother was a hard-working widow trying to make ends meet. Susan was the daughter of a well-to-do farm family. And so as it came down to the last words, Betty, or Susan, misspelled a word, and Betty won the spelling bee and the prize, which was a brand new Bible. So on the way home, Susan's mother asked her, said, couldn't you have spelled that word? And Susan said, Yes, I could. I knew the word. Mother said, well then, why did you miss it? And Susan said, well, Mom, you know Betty is quite poor, and she doesn't get many presents. She wanted that Bible very much, and she's tried so hard for it that I thought I'd let her win it. Mother then said, well, Susie, what made you decide to do that? To which Susie said, well, it was from our Sunday school lesson today in which we learned to outdo one another in showing honor. This young teenage girl understood what St. Paul was saying. She showed deference and respect to Betty and her efforts and knowing that she herself could, or her family could buy a Bible like the prize, and Betty's couldn't, she deferred to Betty and allowed her to win. So a few days later, it was Susan's birthday, and one of her gifts was a brand new beautiful Bible. And on the flyleaf were written the words of Romans 12, 10, outdo one another in showing up. If we do that, we allow the Holy Spirit to work, the Holy Spirit to do its job. We don't get in competition with each other. We don't get into petty bickering with one another. We don't get mad because Grandpa didn't get elected Sunday school superintendent or, or Dad didn't get elected head usher or all the other things that break out cause fights in churches. I'm mad because church decide to paint the doors some other color than what you wanted or picked a different carpet or 
all the other crazy things that cause churches to be divided and to break up if we outdo each other in showing honor to one another this doesn't happen and the world will know we are Christians by our love for each other then he says in verse uh, 11 do not be slothful and zeal that is don't hesitate don't delay in your diligence for the faith be fervent in spirit that is to boil with heat or the picture boiling over with heat it's like putting soup on the stove and you forget about it and it boils up and it spills over you're supposed to be that hot with the Holy Spirit allow the Holy Spirit to guide not only you but the congregation and the community of faith serve the Lord of course means to be almost like a slave to the Lord, putting the Lord first and what he needs, doing that which is appropriate. Verse 12, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, uh, be constant in prayer. So be patient in tribulation, it means to remain in tribulation, setting an example for others. It means that you Stay committed to the Lord and let the Lord shine through your tribulation as you stand firm in it. Then pray, constant prayer, that means to, uh, be, to persevere in prayer, to be devoted to prayer, to be attentive to prayer. Again, something many Christians have fallen out of practice in doing. We need to pray, pray some more, and pray some more after that. We need to pray continually, praying for the church, praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ, praying for our family, praying for our nation, praying for the world, praying for relief for people who are in dire circumstances or in natural disasters or in war or in uh, droughts or suffering from some kind of plague. The prayer is a very important part of the Christian life. And not forced prayer. Certain religions of the world make their people pray at certain times. It's mandated. If they don't pray then, they're in trouble. You know, they're violating one of the, the laws of what they have to do. But we're just asked to pray whenever. We don't have to have a fixed time. We can pray driving down the street. We can pray running around the bases on the ball field. We can pray hoeing the garden. We can pray cutting the grass. We can pray doing our job. We can pray continually and everywhere. And so that the world will know we are Christians, we pray. And we pray some more. And then he says, contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. That is, that we give of what we have to the work of the church, our time, our talents, and our treasure. And we seek hospitality, that is to pursue, or to seek after, or to eagerly pursue, giving hospitality to the stranger, to the sick, to the needy, to the suffering. It means to have a fondness or affection for the stranger and to be generous to the guests. Again, a problem we sometimes see in the church when somebody visits a church and people ignore them. They don't seek to show hospitality to them. They're so wrapped up in their own world. Or they think, well, this is our church and you don't really look like you belong, so we'll just ignore you and maybe you'll go away. And as followers of Jesus, we're to pursue hospitality with a stranger. We're to have a fondness for it. We're to seek it out. So if we follow these directions of St. Paul as he lays them out in this 12th chapter of Romans, we can overcome this tragedy in the church today of the world not, be a, not being able to separate us from non-Christians. But if we follow St. Paul, then the world will know, as we fulfill Jesus' words, 
will know we are Christians by our love for one another. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds to Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us... <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, in giving us dominion over the things on earth, you made us fellow workers in your creation. Give us wisdom and reverence so we need the resources of nature, that no one may suffer from our abuse of them, and that generations yet to come may continue to praise you for the bounty through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The psalmist writes in Psalm 8, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have sent your glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and infants, you have established strength because of your bones to still the enemy and the adventure. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your love you created us in your image and made us stir to the animals that live in the skies, the earth, and the sea. Bless us in our care for our pets and animals. Help us recognize your power and wisdom and the variety of creatures that live in our world and hear our prayers for all that suffer over work, hunger, and ill treatment. Protect your creatures and guard them from all evil now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Say, I'm the one that talks about. Blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bless and protect. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bless and protect. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bless and protect. Amen. Thank you. Hey, Jackson. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and bless and protect you down forever. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and protect you down forever. Amen. Let us now receive the benediction. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. May the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. We conclude with, O beautiful for spacious skies, page 6 in your
this summer. We are so thankful to our Heavenly Father and to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who have blessed us all these years with the opportunity to provide this witnessing summer in such a unique setting. We are also so thankful that the Checkers family continues to bless us with the use of this facility even though this is the second summer in a row they have not made any in income off of this site. We thank the Lord for the Checkers' generosity and support of this witness and this outreach. Also, we want to thank our own Mark Booth for the role he plays in preparing the drive-in for our use and seeing everything is ready each summer. Also, we appreciate his seeing that the marquee has the service day and time on it for people to see as they pass by. This witness cannot continue without the continued work and support of all those who volunteer their time, talent, and in some cases even treasure in setting up and taking down the worship area, setting up and taking down the area with the donuts and coffee, preparing and fixing the sound system, reading the lessons, providing the music, both vocal and instrumental, helping with Holy Communion, passing out the bulletins, taking attendance, putting up the flyers and taking them to the downtown location afterwards, sweeping up, cleaning, and any other chore I might have overlooked. I thanks to each and every one of you who helped in any way, no matter whether it was one Sunday or the entire summer. Your help and actions were greatly appreciated. And last but not least, I thanks to you, all of you, who support us throughout the summer with your attendance and support and give us a reason for being here and offering this ministry. Your support throughout the years has been greatly appreciated and I hope it continues. <coughs> Next Sunday, this 8 o'clock service moves back to the sanctuary at 27 North Wittenberg and all of you are invited to come down and join us there to worship or if you have no church, we invite you to join us. Now that summer is over, if you would like to worship later, our second service is at 1030. For those of you who have your own church, but join us each summer for this ministry, we thank you for su your support and being with us each week, and we look forward to seeing you here next summer in 2018. May God bless you richly with his grace in Jesus Christ. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. This concludes the September 3rd Labor Day weekend service. This was at the drive-in. Um, pet blessing. Uh, next week it will be back at uh, the sanctuary at the 1030 service. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.